Hey. <clears throat> hey, my lovelies. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. Oh, wow. I just put my tea on and I have to get my tea. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Hope y'all like these lives. Comment here if you're still loving the lives. If you wanna keep us doing these lives, I would love to continue. I love the fact that I get your messages and I get to see how you're doing. I want y'all to see a little bit of that, my sunshine over here. Got a little sunshine going on. So I want y'all to see some of it. Anyway, so welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to my channel. I am Patricia Evans. You are on Joy Party TV. So I hope that you all are ready for today's message. I'm going to wait for some people to come in. And as I do so, I'm going to let anybody brand new know what the channel is about. So I this is a woman's channel where we unlock a woman's joy. We do it from her beauty, from the inside out. And we keep Jesus at the center of all that we do. And what we do is we, we believe in blessing the whole woman, body, mind, and spirit, and transforming her life to be more into her calling so she can live out her calling and to be more like Christ. Amen? So we're walking in the spirit. We're living out our calling, and we're unlocking our joy. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Joy Party TV. All right. So definitely, if you make any comments here, I'll look at those comments at the end of the message in the sermon. And I hope that you're getting my emails. If you're not getting them and you want to, go ahead and email me at patriciaevans1 at gmail.com. I can say a prayer for you. We can talk, and you can just keep up with all that I'm doing here and outside of here. We're doing lots of other things outside of here that I'd love for you to be a part of. So what we do is we do a movement and message every time you see me. I am an actress, dancer, performer, and I use my performing arts to glorify the Lord. And it's for women and children. For this channel, it's primarily for women. So on Sundays, we do mostly a message, a little bit of movement. And on Tuesdays at 7 Live, we do mostly movement and a little bit of message. All right, so join me as I move and I give you the message. But first, let's say a prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for this ministry. Thank you for the wonderful people, the women that join us, our lovelies, that have been such a blessing to the ministry. Lord, I just pray that you just grow this ministry to be as large and as wide as you would like it to be, touching those who you have already set aside to be blessed with it, Lord. Touch their minds and hearts. Lord, soften their soil to be able to be able to receive the seed, let it grow in their hearts and in their minds to bless them in Jesus' name. Bless me only to speak what you want me to speak. Holy Spirit, go through me. Take over my mind and my heart and my spirit. Speak through me, Lord, and let your let your your um your light so shine through me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, first thing we do is movement. So let's get up and do some movement. Like I always say, oops, I don't want to knock anything down. Like I always say, God says you need to move in order to really get your whole body involved. You don't want to just sit stagnant and just listen. You want to be actually engaged. So let's get up and move. So get your sash and go ahead and, oh, by the way, this is what I'm wearing today. It's my Sunday outfit for today. Once again, thank you for letting me get dressed up with you. <laughs> all right, get your sash. Get that on the side. We're going to do what we always do every Sunday for now until I am led to do anything else. This is what we're going to do. Oh, I like that bow. That's a cute bow. <laughs> all right, so get your sash. And today I'm going to do sharp and I'm going to do smooth moves. But we're always going to be giving God the glory. And all we do is we give God our body our beauty, our sensuality now on this channel. And all that I do, it's all about the healthy balance of spirituality, sensuality in women. Women want to have that. And I'm here for you to be able to do that. So we're going to give everything to the Lord right now. Prepare to give your whole self to the Lord. And first we give him our first fruits of our finances, as well as our, our bodies, our minds, and our spirit before we do anything. So these are some ways to do it when you're not with me. So you can follow after me. Okay, let's do some sharp moves. Sharp and sharp and sharp and sharp. There you go. 
Let's do sharp ones. Slow. Side. The sway. Sway. So let's go down with that. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, Jesus. Slow and slow. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We give you all of ourselves. All of ourselves. Hugging, bowing down, praising. Giving up of all of who you are. Harder and let's go down with it. How about you stay like this and bend? Giving God all of who you are. Slow and shoulders are leading, the hips are following. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We give you all of ourselves. Our King, King of Kings. Our beauty, our sexuality, our intelligence, everything that we are is yours, Lord. Going faster and go low. Bowing down. Thank you, Lord. One more time with the smooth. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We give you all of ourselves. We thank you for all things, Lord. We give you all of ourselves first. We did it. We did it. Don't want to knock anything over. There you go. We did it. We did it. We did it. I always feel better when I'm moving my body. And I feel like the Lord has led me to lead you to do the same. So I always feel better. It's like it ignites something so that I can receive better, you know? So I think it will do the same for you. And I think we got more people in as we dance. So welcome. Welcome to the party. Y'all know that when we get to heaven, that's what we're going to be doing, right? Party. So we got to get ready now, you know? <laughs> All right. So. Today, our message is how to develop your spirit. So we've been talking about gifts of the spirit and uh, the spiritual realm and all that there is that in the Bible about our giftings in our spirit and how do we navigate that. So we've already talked about navigating the spiritual realm. So I hope that you watch that overview. And then last week, we also talked about um, we continued our message about the spirit and um, about the Holy Spirit. And we wanted to learn more about how who he is and what his job is. And it's all about the Holy Spirit. So now that we know this all about the Holy Spirit and we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit, then now we can go back into our office, into what we talked about when we were going over all of the different, um, we were going through the different columns of when we are born with gifts, before we're saved, and after we're saved, how God uses the gifts. And so we're born with many gifts, including the gifts um, of prophecy, of teaching, preaching, all of those things, and even more. But then after we're saved, then God uses those gifts and he attaches himself and his own spiritual gifts that he gives us along with the ones we were born with and then gives us the opportunity to develop new gifts. So I have this chart. It has my nail polish on it a little bit. And these are some gifts that we're born with. These are the ones we, we gain once we're received, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. Everyone has them. And then we have the opportunity to develop these gifts and to use them in our office. So let me just tell you, once again, let me just give you a little recap. So we're born with prophecy, with serving, with teaching, with encouraging, giving, leading, and mercy. So the leading probably has a lot of other gifts in it too. And I'm sure and evangelizing is in there as well. But these are the types of things that we already have when we're born. But when we're born again, we all have the gifts, the Holy Spirit's gifts. All of them are in us and we have, we have the ability to live them all at the fullest. And they are love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, self-control, patience, faithfulness, and, and gentleness. You can look that up in Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. You can go ahead and look that up if you want to know what they are. We all 
are required to, ex- to show that in our lives, all of those. And I'll read them again. Love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, self-control, patience, faithfulness, and gentleness. When, when we're in different situ- situations in life, there is no excuse. You have God living inside of you and giving you the ability to do all of those. Now, the next column that I have, which is um, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, word of prophecy, faith, working of miracles, discernment of spirits, gifts of healing, tongues, and interpretations of tongues. Those are giftings that are distributed by the Holy Spirit to whom he feels needs them. There are there was a, there are some charts out there on the internet that, that kind of connect the nine fruits of the spirit with those gifts because there are nine and nine. So somehow there are pe- there are people who believe that they're all connected. So love will be connected to the word of wisdom, joy, the word of knowledge, peace, faith, long suffering, the gift of healing, gentleness, the working of miracles, goodness, prophecy, faith, discernment of spirits, meekness, discerns of kind of, of kinds of tongues and temperament, the interpretation of tongues. I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but I did find that on the internet. This is not my chart. So if you wanted to just take a screenshot of that, you can see if that is works for you. But what I would say about those different um, giftings that you are have the ability to develop because you have the nine fruits of the spirit, okay, they are done in a specific way. We all have the ability to do it, but many of us go through our whole lives and we don't exercise that muscle. We never get word of wisdom. We never get knowledge. We never get prophecy, faith, works, all that. Now, everyone has a little bit of that in them because we're human. They have a little bit of that sometimes. But what this is saying is that you actually have a gifting in it where you can give people a word of wisdom. You can give others that. You can get it for yourself. It's something that the Holy Spirit gave you a gift to be able to do. There's also word of knowledge. So you're very knowledgeable. You can give people knowledge. You have this knowledge that's not of this earth. It's above this earth. Something only the Holy Spirit can give you. You can prophesy. And that is a gift. Now, all of us as people, once you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if you want to do that, we can do that at the end of the video. I would love to say that prayer with you so you can join the family of Christ because this is all for those that are in the family of Christ, those people who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior through prayer, through repentance. Those people have the ability to do these things. First, they end up with the nine fruits of the spirit that's in them. It's in me right now, all nine of them. I should be able to exercise them at any given time when I need to. And I should be growing to be more like Christ every day and letting the Holy, dying to my flesh, letting the Holy Spirit live in me more so I can be the light in this world. And that is the nine fruits of the spirit. Um, Now, because I have that, I now have to renew my mind and do some steps, which I'm going to share with you in order to fully be able to have those other giftings that I mentioned before. Okay. Um, And they are for basically these spiritual giftings that I'm talking about are used for your calling. So that's important. All right. So what I was led to read based on what we're talking about today was in first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, but I want to read all of it leading up to 13 from one to 13. So if we can go into first Corinthians chapter 13 from verse one to 13, that would help me set up what I want to share with you on how to develop those other giftings so that you can have those supporting muscles for your ultimate calling. You understand that, right? So we have the base, the nine fruits of the spirit, but we need to develop giftings so that we can use those giftings to support our ultimate calling, okay? All right, let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses one through 13. Love is dispensable. Now, we usually use this for the love, you know, like for Valentine's Day or for the, whenever we wanna talk about love. And, but the thing is, is that it's not, shouldn't just be used for weddings. It shouldn't just be used for Valentine's Day. Shouldn't just be used for when we want to talk about that word love. This is part of what is in us. In fact, it was with the first one I put from the gifts of the spirit. So let's talk about that for a minute. This is going to be how we're going to use the fruits of the spirit 
to develop these gift, these other giftings that we have access to. Love is dispensable is the is the title to this chapter. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. I'm in the NIV, by the way. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give all my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Verse four, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not proud. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Verse 8, love never fails, but where there is prophecies, they will cease. Where there is tongues, they will be stilt. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when we, when, when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Verse 12. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. Verse 13, listen clearly to this last verse. And now these three remain. After all those different things of the giftings that I'm wanting you to develop have passed away because at one point we're gonna face God in heaven and all those things will be passed away and we'll see it all fully in heaven. We won't need all these things because we'll be with him. But while we're here, he has to impart this in us so we can navigate the spiritual realm and understand our giftings and do what we have to do down here. But all those things that we needed, we won't need because one day we will all know and we will be known. But this is what he says, what the Bible says. And now these things remain. But these things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So no matter what, even in heaven, faith, hope, and love will always be there. But the greatest of them all is love. So I what I want to preface with to you before we move on any further with how to develop these giftings, you need to understand that these giftings are only here because we're in this realm. They're only up here because we're down on this earth and we need to survive in this world. So in order to navigate this realm, in order to um, use giftings from heaven to be in a foreign land because we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we are now are born again, we're not of this world anymore. We're in it, but we're not of it. But we have our king, our fathers. Now we have like his DNA in us. We have him in us. Now he imparts his knowledge, his wisdom, his prophecy, his faith, his miracles, his spirits discerning so we know what's right or wrong, healing when we need it, tongues if we need to speak tongues, and interpreting of tongues. He's giving us all of the things we need for to move in our calling for whatever we're going to be doing down here. We all have an office and a specific thing that we are. Either you're evangelist, you're a preacher, you're a healer, whatever it is, you're here to do that. That's what you were born for. Excuse me, now that you have crossed over and been born again, you can finally do it, but you're not fully ready if you just receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can't just go do it just because you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just go start doing stuff. You now you need to start praying and developing these other giftings so you can grow and then you can do it in its fullness as you while you're here on this earth. But what's important to know 
even as you start to develop these giftings, is what they are. They're only for this world, most of them. They're only in part. When you prophesy, you only know a part of the prophecy for whatever God gives you. You don't know everything. You're not God. And we need to not look up to prophets that are calling themselves prophets like they're God. You're not supposed to worship them. You're not supposed to think they know everything. And just even me, the giftings of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's giving me to tell you, this is wisdom. This is anointed wisdom that I'm giving you, not of me. I sometimes don't even know what he's going to tell me to say. He's speaking through me. He's taking over and speaking for me. And I'm learning just like you. So you didn't, you never worship the person doing it or the thing that they're doing because it's always in part. We only know a piece of what God's telling us for whatever you need for today. Amen. Even Jesus, when he was here, he spoke in parables because he said, you can't understand it all. I think our brains would just blow up if we could really know everything. So he gives us what we need for when we need it. In fact, my husband mentioned today, I said, honey, I just want to go back into some of the old, some of my readings that I did before, like a new Christian. He's like, you know, yeah, me too. You know, when I read it again, it's like the first time I've ever read it. The Lord reveals it to you as you need it. So we need to understand that when we are going forward with trying to build the muscle of getting these giftings, they are not to boast. They're not to show off. They're not for your own self. And it's, they're not all God. They're not God. They're godly and God is in it. But this is not God. We do not worship them, these gifts. We don't worship people who have them. You understand that? Because they all will go away when they're not needed. And all we'll have is faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of all is love. The other thing. So first thing I want to show you is in order to get these gifts, you have to pray to have the heart of Christ. So that's the first thing. We're going to show you some three things and unwrap three things that are very important. So if you get your pen and paper out, you want to get some notes with the Lord has led me. The first thing you want to do is you definitely need, in order to start building these giftings that are so beautiful and amazing so that you can bless yourself and others around you in your, in your calling, you need to start to begin to say a prayer asking God for his heart. You want the heart of Christ. So sure, we have the gifts of the Spirit, but we need to ask God to, to do an operation on our hearts and say, I want to renew my mind and my heart. I want to be like you, Christ. I want to have a heart like you. So what is that? What are some things um, you want to have some things like him? Now, this is the thing that Jesus has. First of all, first thing you need to do is you need to, I know this is going to sound backwards from a lot of Christians, and I tend to do things backwards. That's just how I do it. And it doesn't sound very Christian-like, but bear with me. I'm getting there, okay? I'm going to get you somewhere with this. You want to have the heart of Christ. What is the heart of Christ? There's some things that are in his heart. And he told us what was the most important thing to him. You know, someone, I think it was Nicodemus. He's like, what is the, one of the, one of them, uh, the people in his time asked him, uh, so what is the main commandment now? And he says to love God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he said. We also know that he says, go out and make disciples of men. Remember, we've always said that. So the king in this castle, the king, these are the things that matter the most to him, right? When we know that that matters the most to him, then we already know that much. You don't got to think hard or tr struggle really hard in the Bible to find out what matters to Christ most. So if you pray for the heart of Christ, you'll be on the right track if you are in line with that. So let's unpackage that. So love yourself. Love yourself. You need to love yourself. Now, when I say love yourself, I'm not talking about the yoga, love yourself. You're your own God, love yourself. Go within yourself. No, 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 no. We have established already. If you don't know that already, go into my other videos. Your flesh can do nothing good. It can only serve the devil and the world, this world system. If you do anything of your flesh and of Patrice, It'll only ruin things. We just saw a sermon today talking about that in the Bible, how whenever that was done, when we went outside of God, we messed up. And some of those things we messed up on, we're still suffering today for some of the biblical things that were messed, that people messed up with. When we think of David, when we think of Abraham, when we think of Moses, these things, a lot of things still stuck with us later on. You know what I'm saying? So we don't go outside of God and the king and decide, I'm not going to let you be the king. I'm going to let myself be the king. So when I say love yourself, I'm saying within the kingdom's understanding of loving yourself, God made you. How dare you not love what God made you? 
God made my skin color. So honestly, I love my skin color because I have a heart of Christ and Christ loves my skin color. So I love my skin color. I love my eyes. I love my body. I love everything God made me to be. Because why? Because God made me and he loves me and he must have wanted me to be this way. So I love myself the way I am. That does not mean the world's way of loving. The world's way of loving yourself means don't grow. Don't be better than yours. Don't be, don't do things like the kingdom here. Love everything that you are, even if you don't grow, even if you're not trying to be healthy, even if you're going to get a heart attack because you're overweight or you're, you're having, you have a lot of sin in you. Love yourself anyway. That's the world's. I love myself as the kingdom, as it aligns with the kingdom. And I love myself more and more, the more I obey Christ. Because why? Christ on it favors me more when I obey him. So that helps me love myself. But there was not, I didn't always love myself. And it's very hard for people to love themselves honestly, because our flesh is ugly. And we see it, we know it more than anyone else other than God. So I know what I've done wrong. So how do I love myself? Well, because I, if in order to bypass loving my flesh, the secret to loving yourself when you can't love yourself is to love the God in you. First, you have to receive him in your, in your heart to be a Lord and Savior. But once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to love your flesh. You're absolutely right. You are a hot mess. And so am I. We are a hot mess. We could do nothing. We're a stinking corpse without Christ. We die to our flesh and we don't love who we are in this world, but we love what God originally made us to be. And as I grow more and more to do what I was meant to do, be here, I love that person more. But because I didn't start off loving myself, I had to bypass loving myself and find another way to love myself. And what that is, is the secret to that is loving the Holy Spirit in you. Why don't you just love the Holy Spirit in you until you can love yourself? Just love God that lives inside of you. Listen to the God inside of you, not the God inside of you before you're saved. Only the one that is the true and living God. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to live inside of you. When you've had G the Holy Spirit from Jesus who he sent to live inside of you, now you're free to love yourself. Love at least the God living inside of you. You'll have no guilt in doing that. And God requires that because he says to love him with all your soul, your strength, and yourself, right? So love the Holy Spirit in you. As you love the Holy Spirit in you, then you can do the other stuff, which he says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, if you hate yourself, I don't want you loving me like you love yourself because you don't love yourself. So that's why I started with love yourself. Amen. And with a woman's ministry, we really need to learn to do that. So once you have established this love in the right way, the kingdom way, starting with the Holy Spirit, loving the Holy Spirit in you, listening to the Holy Spirit, growing to be more like Christ every day. And the more you're like Christ every day, it's getting easier to love yourself. So now you're actually loving Patrice. I actually love Patrice. I can honestly say I love her. I adore Patrice because Patrice is someone who is now living out her calling. She's lovable. She's probably always been lovable, but it was really hard for me to love me because I know too much. But because my sins are nailed to the cross, hallelujah, the moment I was born again, now I can love me because I'm clothed with Jesus. And when God sees me, he sees his son in me. Hallelujah. Now I can love myself because God dwells inside of me and doesn't allow me to do the things I used to do. Hallelujah. Now. Whew, I can have a clear conscience in loving myself because I knew all those things I did wrong. And it was so hard to love myself knowing what I know. You may not know, but I know it. But because they were nailed to the cross, he's washed my sins and I'm clean today. Now I can exhale and I can love me. But it started with loving God first, amen? But now that you've created this love affair that you have, with the Holy Spirit and is spilling into loving yourself. Now we can move forward. And we left last time having that peace. We prayed for peace, didn't we? So we have that peace that we prayed for. We have a peace in ourselves because we love ourselves. We have, we're loving everything God made us to be in a healthy way. In the kingdom, we are being the best we can be in our physical fitness, in our minds. We are committed to continual growth in the kingdom. 
So we're loving someone who's committed to continual growth, not somebody who's lazy like the world. Just take me as I am, love me. That's the devil's love. That's the devil's fake love because he doesn't want you to grow. He wants you to, no, 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 stay heavy set, stay heavy, stay messed up. I love you as you are. You don't know who you are. You're a mess. Stay that way. That's not love. He's hating you. But in the kingdom, he's saying, commit yourself to continual growth and being more like me every day. And you will start to love yourself because you're going to start doing things that make you love yourself. You're going to be healthier. You're going to be eating well because this is my temple. And you're going to sell, you're going to take care of your temple because of me. You're going to think right, feel right, obey the Holy Spirit. And you're going to, it's going to be easier to love the flesh even because now you have committed that flesh to loving Christ and obeying. So what you want to do is the first thing you want to do with the love is you, with loving yourself is you want to honor that and give glory to God with yourself. So you want to honor what he gave you to be and everything he gave you to be, gifts and all. And you want to honor God with that and give glory to him. You want to guard everything God blessed you with, the giftings, the beauty, the everything he gave you. You want to guard it now that you see that it's special, now that you know God lives in you. Now you'll guard it, right? And you'll use it for the kingdom. So you're going to be constantly asking God now that you have his heart and you love yourself and you love what he made of you. You're going to say, help me to live out my calling in this kingdom. What's my job? I'm excited now to play my part in this kingdom to help advance you, your kingdom. What do I need to do? Am I like, am I a preacher? Am I a teacher? What am I? And give me all the giftings that I need to do it. So now that you know how to do that for yourself, you put on your mask and I'm not talking about the COVID-19 mask. I'm thinking of, of being in a plane where if the plane's going down, you got to put your mask on first. Well, I'm going to say, you've got to love you first and not in the world's way. Like I said, you've got to love what God, you got to get this. What's going on here, Lord? What's this? I remember I took leadership classes when I was getting my post-master's degree um, in education. And I, I there's some things that stuck with me. Can being committed to continual growth, leaders are committed to continual growth, good leaders, servant leaders, that's like Christ. And you know who you lead first? A leader has to lead themselves first. You know, I, was, I thought, I was like, wow, you're right. I got to lead me first. So let's get that out first. Why am I here? How can I use this for you, Lord? What's my ministry? Who am I? Give me, give me what I'm here to do. Clear my mind. Fix me. Have, give me the heart like you. Let me get it together. So you're asking God, number one, to, for his heart. And once you get that, you want to make sure that you have honor and you're honoring who you are. And when you ask for his heart, then you will love yourself, I, I should say. And because you love yourself, you're going to honor yourself. You're going to give God, God honor with yourself, your whole self, body, mind, and spirit going to glorify him with your whole self. You're going to guard yourself, guard all that good stuff he gave you. You're going to guard it. You're not going to let people mess that up. So you're going to have boundaries you set. We've talked about that in our previous videos. And you're going to use it for his kingdom. You're going to focus yourself to learning about your calling for the kingdom. Okay. Number one. Second thing you're going to do is now that you got that down pat, that takes time. Spend some time. So get off the phone. Start developing that. Now and only then can you step out into an office and you can begin to bless others with that. And you're going to love others as you love yourself. But the, how do I love others like I love myself? Well, I don't know. How did you love yourself? First, you asked for Christ's heart. You loved yourself and you guarded it. You used yourself for glory. You, used to, you guarded everything you had and you used it for the kingdom. Well, you're going to help others do that. You're just going to. Pass on what you've learned for yourself for others, right? So when you've gotten this system down and you're doing it for others, then you'll be able to use the giftings properly. How do you do all these things? How do I do all that? Well, you're going to need the giftings to do it because you're going to need to be able to have faith when things come your way and you need to guard yourself. You need to have faith that God's going to be with you. You need to be able to hear him when he tells you what your calling is. You need to have wisdom so that you don't go one way or another. You're, you're constantly working out all this stuff so you can glorify him with your giftings. You have to know what those giftings are. You have to be able to hear him and Lord, okay, um, you told me that one day that I would be speaking to women on, on their self-worth. And you said it would be a platform that I would do it. Lord, help me understand that. Give me what I need to do that. I, I need the wisdom to know what things to do, what platforms to use, everything. 
You're praying for the wisdom. Now that you're setting up this whole taking care of myself, loving myself, using myself to glorify, now you can start building those muscles that you need to be able to do that. You need to ask for faith, Lord. I don't believe it. I don't see it. Give me the strength. Give me a level of faith so that I can carry this out. Give me the wisdom so that I can know right from wrong. Let me know. Let me get the knowledge. I don't have the education. I haven't gone to school for that. Give me that knowledge that I need. Give me the workings of miracles. If I'm going to be doing something that has to do with that, then I need that gifting. So these are things you're asking for in order to live these things out. You're asking God to, to help you with the things you need so that you can do the things he told you. So I started with him telling you what you would do. And then you said, well, then how, in order for me to get from, from A to C, you know what I mean? The B part is what you're praying for. You're asking God to help you with these things. But as you're asking for him to do it, you need to have healthy soil so that these things can be planted on healthy soil. And that's why you need to be loving yourself first. You need to be having a heart like Christ. You have to have all that soil right first. Then when you put that stuff on that soil, they're going to go out right. The biggest thing that there is that is centered around all of this that I'm saying. So the first thing I said was you're going to have a heart like Christ. Second thing is loving yourself. Third thing is loving your neighbor as yourself. Uh, this is all around what? Love. What God is trying to tell, wants me to share with you is when you're getting anything, when you want to get a gift or anything, the gifting is not separated all by itself. It is connected. It is part of a bigger plan. And the plan is wrapped around love. So if you came on the video because you're like, oh, I want to get the gifting of prophecy. I want to get, none of it is ever stand, standing alone just to have it. You've got to first have love of Christ in your heart. When you want to have a heart like Christ, you have to have a heart of love like Christ. We're talking about agape love. And, and my husband always brought this to me. He's like, man, the Bible says, if you have love for people that love you, you don't have a special, that's not special. It's easy to love people that love me. You know, narcissists, we talk about narcissists. That's the most awful state of mind you could be in someone who controls and gaslights and put people down they're very abusive put people down they're very abusive and gaslighting means lying about you to put themselves up and bring you down if you've had that that's gaslighting this i believe is from a demonic spirit that's behind it but i think that if you've done it long enough now you can't even turn back only the holy spirit can help you that's the opposite of love you know when you have um when you're when you're someone who is always trying to control people and you're just, all you're there to do is just get what you want from people. That's not, that's love. That's, that's a false love. It's like the world. I love you only if you do this for me. I'm taking notes. That's the opposite of what the Holy Spirit says. But what God is saying, my dog just walked in, but what God is saying is that, no, agape love, you love the unlovable. You know, you love the, the not so pretty, the not so smart, the not so great. You know, I remember uh, I was looking, thinking about what happened in our capital and how awful that was. And, you know, soon as my heart starts to get angry at something, then I pray for those people. So I said, Lord, I like to challenge myself and pray for those people who are harder for me in my flesh to pray for. So I'd like for you to do that this week. It's hard to do, but that will be a heart like Christ. So having a heart like Christ is not doing things that are that serve you like a narcissist or just serve you as a regular person or people that are easy to like, or they look like me, they're my color or they're, they're women. They're not, you know, men. I pray for men and I love men and I pray for them too. That's just not my ministry. You know what I mean? I pray for people who don't have a lifestyle that are like mine. In fact, when I start feeling this thing in my flesh where I don't like them, that's when I let that God love kick in and I focus on them more and I start to love them more. That's a different kind of love. It's not of your flesh. This is agape love. So when you're asking for a heart of Christ, be careful. You're going to get agape love, love that doesn't make your flesh happy. Your flesh is going to be a little annoyed. You're going to be like, I don't like that person. That person wasn't nice to me. I don't want to love them. Well, agape love is when it overrides your what you want. And you start to pray for people like they're like you're praying for yourself. So I pray for myself because it will affect me. It matters to me because I won't be able to be healthy and I won't be able, I have to love myself, right? I want my home, my children, my things to be anointed. I pray off demons for my family. I anoint my home. I actually, I can say it that last night, I just so happened to anoint my home. I hadn't done it in a little bit, but I was taking oil and anointing my home, my home, anoint my children, my animals, my things. So the difference between the world and narcissists and everything is that once you get it for yourself as a Christian in the kingdom, there is no excuse. 
when it's time for me to pray for my friend or pray for someone else, I know the level of prayer I should be praying. It should be just like it's my child or my home or my thing. When you get it for yourself first, now you'll have something called empathy, which is what narcissists lack, the world lack. You will feel it like it's your own. That's why I started with you loving yourself first. If you don't know what that feels like for yourself, to know how to pray off demons for yourself, to know how to ask for wisdom and healing and praying off demons and speaking in tongues. If God gave you that gifting of speaking in tongues, the purpose of that is so that the devil won't hear you. If you don't have that gifting and God, you haven't been anointed to have that gifting for your own walk, how will you do it for someone else? Why would you do it for someone else? We know that because you have the card of Christ. So now you would do it for someone else, but you can't do it until you've developed it for yourself first. I hope that makes sense. So you're getting his heart. The first thing you're going to do is learn how to love yourself, yours, take care of your home, your husband, your stuff. Get it together. Get it together. Get your spiritual walk together. Find out what, what giftings you would need for your calling. First thing you're asking for is what is my ultimate calling? What do you have me on this earth to do, Lord? That's your first thing when you're starting to get it together. Take off March. Too. Let March be your me time March where you're just finding out what's up for with you first. Get off social media. Then when he tells you that, he will tell you, now you need the in-between steps between now and then. It could be 10 years from now. You don't rush it. It's whenever time God wants. You, that ain't your business. Your business is that you need to be getting all the muscles, the supporting muscles, so you can live out that calling. All right? You understand. And you, you do it for yourself. Once you've done it for yourself, then and only then can you begin to do it for others. And trust me, you're already doing it for others when you're doing it for yourself because you're doing it for your family members. You're building that muscle with your family members. Okay, so let's go over each one of them. And I hope that helped. Don't start stepping out trying to do stuff for everybody. When you don't even got your own mask on. And no, I don't agree with these ministers out here or people uh, speaking on the Lord talking about put others before yourself. That's not proper in the kingdom. That doesn't make sense. He said, love others as you love yourself. I'm sorry, it sounds sweet, but it's just as demonic as, as yoga as far as I'm concerned. Being somebody who's had to learn how to have self-care, working with women, we don't need to hear that. We don't need to hear put others above ourselves because we already do it. We need to hear the opposite of that, right? We need to hear, take care of yourself, not the world's selfish way, but as the, with the kingdom, as the way the kingdom set it up, so that you can take care of people properly. Amen. And you have to now keep that balance of taking care of yourself and others. That's not easy. You got to build that. You got to learn how to do that. You can't be going into ministry if you're a hot mess. You don't even know how to take care of yourself. All right. So first thing is we're going to talk about word of wisdom. What is word of wisdom? What am I doing now? This is something that's not of this earth. It's something I can't tell you in my flesh. Sure, the flesh can be somewhat wise. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That comes from the fear of the Lord. What Lord? The King of Kings. If the King of Kings isn't involved, you have no wisdom. You have something that is demonic of the devil. He knows a lot too. And God gave him a lot, if you remember from last week. So you could be having the wrong knowledge and wisdom. It is not true, pure truth and righteousness and wisdom from heaven. You want wisdom from heaven. What does Solomon ask for? He, God said, I'll give you anything. He asked for wisdom. So why get a million dollars if you don't have a clue? What to do with the hundred? There's some people who've won the lottery and they ended up broker than they were before. If you put perfume on a pig, they call it. If you take somebody who's strung out on drugs and you give them money, what are you going to do? They're going to kill themselves. You don't want just things. That's why you don't want a vision board. Yes, if you're asking me if I'm against vision boards, yes, I'm 100%. So far, I have not been convinced on vision boards. Christians must stop doing vision boards. Do not do vision boards. Do not do yoga. It's the same thing. Tapping into yourself. You are the king. Please don't do a vision board. It is taking you in the wrong path. Okay? You can do plans. You can plan. You can know where God's sending. God already gave you an end of where you're going. You could be doing what I'm talking about, praying for the steps to get there. But there's always a question. You're never 100% sure. Remember, we know in part now. And God doesn't want you to know it all yet. He wants you to know as he wants you to stay before him. Amen. So wisdom is something straight from heaven, like manna. That's something that came right from heaven. That's what we're talking about. So I can only give you something. God said, don't worry. I will tell you what to say. 
That's wisdom. I'm getting it straight from God right now. Deposit it out just for you. It's from him. I'm not in it. Knowledge. So you're going to give me the knowledge from the Bible so that I can say what I need. This is this is reading and, and learning about subjects and knowing about things. God can give you that knowledge. He can give you knowledge that you shouldn't know. How did I know? I'm going to give you this calling. You're going to go out and you're going to go into the Middle East and do this. I don't know anything about the Middle East. I'm going to give you the knowledge of the Middle East. I will deposit that knowledge. I will put it before you. I'll put the books before you and you will just know it. You'll read it better than you've ever read before. That's a gift of knowledge. Knowledge, be, be, uh, having a gift, being able to get degrees and study and know how to study. This is a, a, brain, a brain to know, to be able to take in knowledge. That's a gift. Prophecy, we, we all have that ability when we need it. God can say, listen, when you go out today, you know, God shows me, and I'm going to tell you, he shows me through colors, through hues. I can tell darkness means stay away. I can see things through colors. And so these are discernments of spirits. It's, um, it's, it's sometimes in prophecy, but it kind of gives me a heads up on, no, don't go there. Yes, go here. It's just the way he speaks to me. So God speaks to you in the way that you understand. He made you. He knows how you understand best. So you need to talk to him. and Y'all got to get your conversation going. You got to turn off that phone and get that conversation. If 2020 didn't teach you anything, it should have taught you to spend some time with the Lord because he took all the distractions away. No excuse. No excuse. When he returns and the rapture comes and you, God forbid, are left behind, you'll be like, but you didn't give me time to get to know you better. I gave you all of 2020. I took everything out. Movies aren't even back yet. What's your excuse? You've been telling me you're going to get closer to me for years. Put the phone down. Put it down. If Jesus is coming tomorrow, could you put it down for 24 hours? Do you think you could put that phone down for a second? Can you put it down and wean yourself from the nonsense and the noise? And then when you get back in, you only get stuff that feeds your soul? You think you can do that? You think? You think you can get the wisdom? That's wisdom right there. You think you can get knowledge, only the stuff on YouTube and on stuff that will feed your soul? You think you can waste, not waste your time on nonsense? Sure, have fun looking at some hair videos. Sure, have some fun looking at nail stuff for just to relax your mind some, once in a while. But don't get crazy now. He's coming. You need to clean your house. Prophecy. So know that you can have prophecy. Not that you're a prophet, but you can have that gifting. Any of us can have it if we need it. So if I'm getting ready to go somewhere and God knows I need it for what I'm getting ready to do for my calling, he will literally straight up give me prophecy for that because it's a purpose. God does things purposefully. He don't just do it just so you can show off that you got prophecy. That's the world. Faith. So for my gifting, if I'm praying for you, I've got to have faith to do what I'm going to do. If it's embarrassing, I mean, a lot of people can't do what I do. I got to have faith. I can't do what I do without faith. I'm not sure can't do it because somebody else told me I was good enough to do it. Because sometimes I'm doing things and no one's giving me any accolades. No one's saying anything. No one's cheering me on and saying anything. You know, I got to do it all on the faith that what God told me is going to happen. God said, go out there, do that thing. That's got to be enough for me. I got to have faith in his word. That's got to be enough. When he says, go pray for that hand cancer to be out of her body, I've got to come in knowing God's going to do it because he said he would do it. That's faith. That's a gift of faith that can move mountains. He said faith of a mustard seed. Could you imagine if you had a gift of faith? If you happen to be that kind of person with a gift of faith, what you could do with that? If a mustard seed can move a mountain, could you imagine what you can do? You have this. Everyone has it. Don't, tell, and don't let anyone tell you you don't. Working of miracles, hand in hand with faith. Come on now. You can do it. I can do it. Not in your vision board self. Not in your yoga self. Not in your claim it and claim it and say it self. Because that's coming from you. It's all because God said, I'm going to heal you. God said it. And don't be putting words in God's mind because you want people to think you're so great. Like a lot of false prophets are doing today. If God truly did say it, then he's going to do it. He will do it. He's going to do a miracle. And you've got to have faith in that miracle.
And he's the only one that can do it. You can't, you can't claim it and make it because you said it. Because he has done miracles, now he will do it for me. No. He chooses. You don't tell him who to give the miracles to. God chooses who he's going to give the miracles to. And he'll tell you who they are. And that's all you're going to have faith in. Not because you said, since God does miracles, he's going to do this miracle right now. That's just like a vision board. Uh uh. That's demonic. Vision boards are demonic, as far as I understand. So I learn better. I will retract it if I learn anything different from what I understand. No. Goal boards are good. I like that. We used to do that in Mary Kay. You put a goal. This is my goal. Sure. And they need to be spirit led. But vision coming from you, that's a little, that's that's not what we're talking about here. So you, everything God does has a, a, a purpose for it. It's connected to the body of Christ for a reason. And the reason is always his reason. Sometimes you don't even understand why you're doing stuff. I do things in obedience, not even knowing why I'm doing it. I'm just obeying. I did that for years with my my dance fitness program. He said, go online streaming. I did it. Didn't make any sense back then. But now 2020 passed and pandemic now it all makes sense. But I did it in faith. Didn't make any sense. He wanted me to do belly dancing. I didn't understand it. Just did it out of faith. And look, women's ministry. So all of this has been built up together. He's doing stuff. I do it in faith. He's doing the work. I get emails saying that there be people are being blessed. And it's because of the Lord, not because of me, because I'm doing, and that's good that you don't know it all, because then you'll take all the credit. I can't get any of the credit because I didn't think of it. It wasn't my idea. The fitness program, the, all of it's his idea. So giftings of healing, they all go hand in hand. That goes part of my gifting. Healing is the gifting. It's with fitness. It's with health. He loves you, but he knows you're in a dead world, a world that's dying. So even though he loves me, he doesn't want me to eat like the world and to and not exercise and not take care of myself. So now he has to give me the ability to heal and to understand what I need to do to heal. He needs to, I'm like, a lot of the healing that he tells me are practical. When I'm praying over people, he heals them, but he also gives them a practical word saying, eat better. Some of the healing we need is just to juice more. Greens, <laughs> start juicing. Stop eating that junk food. Stop eating that food. How about that? And then you can actually heal yourself. So maybe what you're really asking for is wisdom. Maybe, Lord, I need some wisdom on how to eat. Maybe I need some wisdom on what to do with myself. You know what I mean? On what exercises I need for my body. You're in a world that's dying. If you start picking up the characteristics of this world, you're going to start getting sick. So God loves you, but he didn't make you that way. You made you that way. You started eating like the world, the Western world, and now you look like them and you're sick like them. He never told you to eat that nonsense. Everything in moderation. Amen? 80-20 split. 80 good, 20 have fun. You're talking to a fitness coach, okay? So I know God doesn't want that. All right, so... We have speaking in tongues. There are people who need that because what they're seeing, God doesn't want the devil to hear it. He can't hear your thoughts, the devil. And so only when you say it out loud can he hear it. That's why you hear me say, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I, I, God forbid, God forbid, things like that. Because I know the devil's listening, but we're covered. But when certain people are praying and God doesn't want that prayer to be heard, then God will give them the gifting of tongues. They don't even know what they're saying sometimes. It's something that the Holy Spirit is praying for them. You can ask for that. It comes from intercession and prayer. You can say, Lord, I just feel awful in everything right now. I've done that recently. I don't know what to pray for. I just know I need prayer. Can you intercede and pray for me? That's where the tongues will come if that's your gifting. If because God can bring you to someone to do that for others and for yourself. He will speak a language that's not of this earth because the devil, he doesn't want the devil to hear. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit speaking on your behalf speaking for you. Amen. But the truth is, is if that's ever done in public, if it's truly tongues, the only way to prove that it's truly tongues is there will always be an interpreter with them that has a gift of interpreting tongues. So that's how you know that that's real, is there will be someone to interpret it. The Bible says that. So that's how you know people are not just saying stuff just to be impressive to other people, because there's this whole thing saying that you're not saved unless you speak in tongues. Not everybody who's saved speaks in tongues, as far as I'm concerned. I think we all have the ability if we need it. If the Lord feels like we need it to carry out his calling, then we will speak in tongues and we have that ability to, and we can pray to be able to. Amen. 
So these are all of those giftings that you can pray for. I hope that you know them and pray for them because in order to carry out the ultimate calling or office God has for you, you will need to develop these giftings because we, as we know from last week, we do have demonic spirits around us and we need these giftings to be able to navigate this world, to live out our calling and to, and to live out your calling is usually to love on other people. So with the first ones you're asking God, for his heart, you're loving yourself. And the third one, to live out your calling is usually serving others. So you spent that time with yourself and the Lord learning about what you need for yourself. And now you've st- you've practiced on yourself and on your family and on your own little circle. Now you know who you are and what you're capable of. Now you can go off and love others with those giftings. If somebody comes to me, now I have a heart. If somebody comes to me and they look tormented, I'm like, man, that peace that I now know and I guard for myself and I honor the Lord with and I have for myself, I want that for you. I'm going to pray that over you. And I pray peace over you. I pray that you can have the heart of Christ. I pray for salvation. You know what I mean? Now you know what to pray for. You're praying for what you have. It's simple. This is like a simple, simple. It's very simple. You're using every one of these gifts so that these people can receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior first. They can have God in them and that they can have these giftings, that they can have their calling. You're praying for them to have what you have. That's why you love yourself first. That's why you got to take care of yourself first. Clean your house first. Amen. I think you understand what I'm saying. I think you get it. All right. So I hope this has blessed you. We will be, God willing, concluding in this next Sunday on the spiritual realm and understanding it and understand our calling. I hope you stay with us next week as we continue this series and we conclude it. All right. All right. Well, I love you all. Let's see um, if you have anything to say. Let's see what you have to say. Speaking in tongues is just a, a lot of gibberish. Makes no sense. Your hair is nice. What did you do with it? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, Golden Star, because I think you deserve the ability to know this. You really do need to know it. So at least you know what you're doing. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the Spirit. It's from the Holy Spirit. God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives giftings. Everyone gets them, as you know in my video. And speaking in tongues is a gift that the Holy Spirit really does give those he chooses to give them to. When you say things that are against the Holy Spirit, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. That is a dangerous thing to do. So you don't want to go around saying that speaking in tongues is gibberish because you are grieving the Holy Spirit. You deserve to know that so that if you continue to do that, that's fine. That's your will because God gives us will. But what I do here is I'm giving you the knowledge and the understanding. So at least you know what you're doing. If you have no respect for God, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you may not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. He's very powerful. You know, he does everything. He's the one that's keeping you alive right now and keeping you well. You, you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. You just don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. So you want to repent of saying that about speaking in tongues because that's something straight from the Holy Spirit. And it's a heavenly language that only the Holy Spirit can do. So you, 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 you know, Lord, they knoweth not what they sayeth is what I would say. But now you know, because I'm telling you that you are grieving the Holy Spirit when you say that. Okay. And it's a sad thing that I'm speaking all this wisdom and all you care about is hair. So thank you for my beautiful hair. Thank you. I do have a channel about it. But what a sad thing that this is going over your head and you're not being blessed. But you know that, that many will be left behind when the, when the rapture comes. And that's when these things that are on YouTube will matter to them more. They're going to see how powerful the Holy Spirit is. Because guess what? The Holy Spirit will be taken out of this world. And then you'll see how much he was working when he was here. And all you know what will break loose. So be careful speaking of uh, against the Holy Spirit. Um, Catherine runs. hello, how are you? I don't know. You must have had a solicitation because it didn't come in. Stacey Overman, blessings. Thank you. And thank you for the compliment of my hair, by the way. And um, thank you and have a blessed day. Have a blessed day to you too. Amen. So thank you for joining me um, um, this week. And I, God willing, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Speaking in heavenly language, amen. That's a heavenly language that not all of us have been able to speak it. You know, I don't have, I don't speak in tongues. I speak groanings when I preach. That's the most. I haven't had the need to speak in tongues. And so there's a camp of people that believe everyone does. I believe everyone can and when it needs, to, when they need to. But that I don't think everybody in the Pentecostal church that you hear speaking in tongues, I don't think that's real. And what that did was it makes people like this person believe that it's not real. Sure, a lot of people are forcing it and it's not real for some people, but that there's true speaking in tongues out there, y'all. Like there are true prophets out there, y'all. And that's where you get the blessings of the, I didn't, oh, I skipped that one. Discerning of the spirits. 
is what you need as a blessing to know the difference if you're saved. Discerning, I don't know why I skipped that one, but that was one of the, the ones that you want to pray for. Discerning the spirits. So if you want to know who truly speaks in tongues and who's not, who's prophet, prophetic or not, God gives you that ability to know that. So don't think that just because some people aren't doing it well, truthfully, means that they're all doing not doing it, okay? All right. I love you all so much. God bless you. Have a great week. Your homework is to love yourself and to pray for the heart of Christ. Amen? So you're praying for that peace in the heart of Christ. Stay off that social media for 24 hours and get ready to get to know yourself so that you can build in your calling. I love you all. Have a great week. Bye.